Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, so today I will be talking about the service matrix. Um, the service matrix plays a very important role if you are a business owner. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're running a connect center or you're running a training company like I do, right? So for me, it's very important for me to know uh, how my customers are reacting to my course content. Um, I mean, do they like it or are they going to recommend to someone else or what is the things which they think uh, i should be improving it so that's a kind of a service matrix right and how my sales uh you know pipeline looks like so um i'll talk in briefly about the service metrics from a service cloud space because obviously this is a part of a service cloud certification which is very important um so Service metrics, I would love to talk about the different kinds um, and how that ties together, you know, if you're, if you're a service cloud customer, right, and, and the functionality which you can make use of it to identify your metrics, okay? Now, uh, when you talk about service metrics, right, there are two kinds of uh, metrics. One is internal metrics and external metrics. Uh, internal metrics is when you are analyzing your agents, right? Let's take an example of a connect center, right? Where the service cloud is used. So you measure internal metrics uh, in terms of your agent performance, uh, how your agents are feeling, are they happy with the work environment? Uh, are, they, are they getting enough training? And are they delivering you know, the right result? I will, I will talk about you know in detail. Uh, and external metrics is all about the customer satisfaction, right? The CSAT score, um, like, you know, are they going to rate you, say, a good or bad or average or whatever, right? So, and external metrics is mostly targeted towards the external customer. Intel metrics is mostly targeted towards internal customers, right? So, um, your agents or, or in other words, you can also use, uh, metrics uh, if you if you don't want it to associate internal external right if you so your customer could be an internal client right let's say you are a a salesforce uh company uh, so you're an agency right uh, a big agency wants to implement salesforce for your internal users right and so the internal users uh becomes your customer right so um how well uh you know they're going to rate uh, the software usage or adoption rate, all of this uh, factors into the metrics, right? And uh, that's one of the things I'm going to look at it, say, so let's talk about internal metrics, right? So when you talk about internal metrics, I'm talking from a call, uh, contact center. Co contact center could be a call center, right? So, you know, many call center forms have one contact center, so uh, one or more call center, right? So let's assume that we are talking about a call center. Right, in call center, what happens? Your customer normally answer the uh, sorry, your agents normally answer the customer query. Right, uh, let's say you are selling a solar panel, right, and your company decides to have a contact center to troubleshoot any issues that's coming out of the solar uh, coming out as a part of solar panel installation. Right, so. When it comes to service cloud, right, you build a case management system in place, right, where the customer can file a case. They can file a case using uh, email to case functionality, or they can file a case uh, using other Omni Studio channel, right? They can contact your customer care center using phone, using chat, using social media, um, using email, right? So that's one of the functionality i have talked about it in the past if you haven't watched it i would highly encourage you to check it out it's an interesting video guys because you know from a certification point of view you should know uh how to configure you know only to oh, i don't know why i can't pronounce today um my apologies um so uh omni studio channel right okay so when we talk about intel metrics right say your customer calls you for a solar panel issue, your agents, uh, you know, who are, right, David or uh, or Lisa or who are, right, answers a call. Let's say the customer decides to contact via phone and say, and a customer, say, a customer name is, say, Peter. Peter says, hey, I have an issue with the solar panel uh, model. Uh, and, and an agent, say, Dave, try to troubleshoot it. And, and he'd been able to uh, troubleshoot uh, Peter's query 
uh, you know, the first attempt, right? Rather than Peter have to call second time. So that can be uh, considered as a part of agent performance metrics, right? Whether the agent is uh, able to solve the customer query in the first time resolution, right? Then agent skill set matters because obviously, right, you can't uh, put an agent uh, to a solar panel uh, call, contact center where he has no idea about solar panels, right? You have to have a the right uh, skilled agent in place, right? That, uh, so that's one of the, so these are the, you know, the two things which you can do. So the, the way you can look at agent performance, the time taken for an agent to resolve a ticket, right? So let's say a customer calls you for a, a solar panel installation uh, issue. So ideally, in a normal scenario, the call should have taken, say, 10 minutes. And if your agent is taking, say, 40 minutes, so there is an issue. So that's a performance issue. So you can measure that, right? Or let's say, you know, every time a custom calls, one of your agents, uh, you know, able to resolve it fairly quickly. So that's, again, a performance-related thing, right? Agent is capable of delivering um, optimum solution in a very short span of time. So that's can be used as a part of agent performance reviews, right? So you can use this as a matrix, right? So this is an internal matrix. Now, what about an external matrix? Uh, that's one of the things I mentioned. You send out a CSAT score, right? Normally, companies send out a CSAT score uh, to the customers to say, hey, um, could you please rate us based on our service, based on the product you use? So if the customer is happy, uh, they're probably rating five out of out of five or 4.5 customer is pretty unhappy they will say two out of five or or even zero right so and those customers are most likely gonna go and say hey please do not use uh, pl uh this company product uh the uh, the service sucks so you know sometimes the word of mouth can do more damage right as well as a good uh as well to your brand so you have to be very careful so having a csat score in place really helps because this will drive your strategy towards customer uh service improvement uh, because what happens is that let's say you might have a very bad uh customer service not because your agents are uh you know under skill but maybe they're understaffed right one guy is getting say 50 to say 100 calls a day and very complicated calls and he trying to resolve and he getting frustrated. So it affects his mental health, his or her mental health. Um, and it's gonna, which indirectly reflects, um, uh, you know, in a customer resolution query. So so you have to factor those in, into consideration, right? So that's why external metrics plays an important role. Now, how do you ma uh, base your metrics, right? It's a very good question to ask, right? It's a very good problem to have in a company right, where, you know, different stakeholders, you know, sit together and decide on metrics, right? So you might have a different metrics in place. Let's say we talked about, you know, two different categories, but sometimes uh, what happens is that companies that tie together in a single list, right? Say, for instance, they wanted to measure overall metrics, right? Uh, you know, without going into the nitty gritty of internal, external, they wanted to say, hey, average handle time, how long, uh, an agent, you know, takes to resolve an issue, right? Customer satisfaction, that's based on a CSAT score, right? First contact resolution. Uh, it's like you Peter calls uh, for a solar panel issue and they've able to resolve um, Peter's query in a single call, right? Without Peter has to, re, you know, redial the contact center again. Total cases, right? Total cases handled by agents in a day. Let's say you receive 100 case and agents able to handle, say, 60 cases in a day. That's pretty good achievement, though. And if and say next month, if you look at the metrics and they say agents were able to solve 70 cases. So you can compare, uh, you know, metrics based on the case that you're getting. Uh, agent satisfaction, this plays a very important role, right? Because if you have an agent who's extremely talented but very unhappy with the company, right the most likely agents will quit and and that's one of the part of an agent turnover right so most of the companies what they do they focus on customer satisfaction which is great but if they're not going to focus on your own internal work resource satisfaction then what's going to happen is the internal resource will get fed up right and when they get fed up they will leave 
and they will live in a time when you need them the most. And this is not going to look good on um, your company performance because your customer might ask, what happened to that agent I used to talk to all the time? The customer will start, oh, so that means your company is not looking after the people. So if the company is not looking after the people, do you, so customer will think, I don't think they're going to look after me as well. So I might as well go to somewhere else to buy my, buy the stuff. So you see, it can have an impact overall. So, you know, most of the companies I know, you know, um, you know, some of the companies I know personally, right, I don't want it to name, they mostly worry about, you know, they don't care about overall employee performance. They care about the customer performance. And I remember, you know, it was like 10 years ago, you know, I used to work for this company. Uh, we, I went in a conference. Um, I was, I went to the conference and what happened was, um, the customer asked, you know, me, hey, what happened to one of the, uh, you know, developers who used to work for you? Well, I said he quit. And the reaction I've seen in the customer face, you said he quit? Why did he quit? It was one of the best resources you had, you know, because I was uh, pretty new to that product that time. So I couldn't answer much. And then my manager said, oh, yeah, he left for a reason. And the client was pretty cheeky. Client said, I don't think he quit. You know, he'd been working there for six years. So he would, he would, so if he decides to leave, must be something your company would have done, right? Maybe you guys didn't look after him very well. And the customer keep on saying, right, look, this is not a really good sign. If you're not looking after your people, I don't think so. You know, your fancy conference will make any difference to us, right? Because I'm getting a feedback, you know, talking to you that, you know, your best people are leaving, right? So this is very important. The reason why I mentioned, right, most of the companies ignore it. They say, oh, okay, we care about the customer satisfaction, which is very important, right? But if the main guy who's looking after the customer, if he don't last, then you think your customer is going to be happy about it, right? The customer will say, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else, right? So you have to end the staff agent turnover, right? It's very important when an agent is understaffed, you, you, you work on that and hire more people to support that person. If someone is, is, if you have a very high performing team, it becomes your main responsibility not to burn that team, right? You know, by giving them lots and lots of work. Yes, they can do it, but, you know, obviously, you know, they will hit a limit where they say, look, I can, we can't do it. So you need to balance that out, right? It's very important to balance that out. So turnover plays a very important role. So you can use these metrics as a baseline, right? You can add other stuff to it, right? Depending upon your business requirement and depending upon the way your company function. To me, what, you know, to me it looks like, right? These um, baselines, uh, you know, plays a, a important role in setting up a foundation, right? Then you can add on top of it. So this is pretty much I wanted to cover. Um, so another thing you can also do, right? Uh, you can create a report, report to see number of open cases. You can build a dashboard in Salesforce, uh, which is pretty simple, right? Um, so to create a report, it's just pretty simple, right? You just go to a case object, create a report, and you know you can um, filter it by open or close, right? And so you can group it group by right in simple terms like a summary report you can do in salesforce so that's one of the things you can do um so yeah uh, my apologies this is a more theory session i do understand that you know it's not really very hands-on session i'm a very hands-on guy right i love to do hands-on um theory bores me at, as well but sometimes you know we got no choice i have to explain it the con uh, my apologies i don't know what happened i can't pronounce today you know i had a I had this coffee this morning. It was very hot. I kind of burned my mouth. So I'm kind of struggling since morning to talk. Um, so my apologies, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if my speech is kind of sound a bit wacky today. Uh, that's really not my intention, but I hope, uh, you know, it gets better over the course of time. Yeah, I definitely don't want it to have drink, you know, hot coffee. It was, it was a bit chill in the morning, so I, I got super excited had a coffee right so just <laughs> kind of burned my mouth so right so that's all i wanted to talk about in today's episode uh hope you guys liked it i think we got a few more uh topics to cover 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. After that, we are done with uh, Service Cloud. I'm going to talk about question and answer. I might add 20 uh, practice question and answer. But for that, you guys have to come to my platform. Uh, I mean, it's free, right? But so you need to log in there and you can take it there. I'm not going to add into YouTube. YouTube is just, you know, I can add the course here. But if you wanted to do practice, you need to come to my platform, right? So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have an amazing evening. Adios.